In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can implement character customization in Unity using modular character assets. So you can see here, I'm using this modular RPG hero kit, which is from the asset store. But if you want to follow along, feel free to use any of your own assets or other asset packs. The important thing is that this workflow uses skinned meshes, which will swap out through code and UI. Just so we're all on the same page, skinned meshes are 3D models that are all influenced by the same armature. This means that no matter what mesh you're using, they will deform the same way to a skeleton's animations. This allows us to be modular and swap out the models, and they will all work with the one set of animations. So you can see here that all of these animations, it doesn't really matter which uh, meshes we're using. We can do it seamlessly and they all deform how you would expect to the underlying skeleton. So before we dive into the code, let's plan out exactly what we want to do. So for planning this out, I'm going to be using Xtiles, who are the sponsor of today's video. So the actual coding of this is going to be into two scripts. We've got a scriptable object and a mono behavior. So let's start with the scriptable object. So using Xtiles, we can drag out a tile here and we'll call this our scriptable object class. So this scriptable object class is going to be responsible for allowing us to create modular sets in the inspector. And this will allow us to gate off certain things if we wish. So for example, you might want multiple scriptable objects that say at this stage of play, can only use three hairstyles. But once the player reaches a certain level, they can use all of the hairstyles and you'll be able to swap out which scriptable object the character customizer is referencing. In our case, we're just going to create one scriptable object with, which has access to all of the items at the start. And I'm, but I'm doing it this way so that if you want to expand it and for other use cases, you can do so. So with the asset pack that I'm using, um, I've got access to a few modular assets. So these are, and we'll make a bullet list here. So we've got um, access to a few different belts, some different clothes, uh, faces, gloves, hair, shoes, and shoulder pads. And for each of these, we're going to need a mesh array to contain all of the possible options. So we can see here that we've got all of these different assets that are available. So if we just open this in a new image, so we've got access to these different clothes, these shoes, gloves, heads, hair, helmets. Um, you know, there's a good range of stuff here. So let's just copy this image. And we'll drop it in here just so we can visually reference that. And let's just expand this to here. So this is what we're looking at. So this is our scriptable object class, and we can reference these different items in these different arrays. Uh, we also might want a um, color array for skin colors. I'll show you how to implement this. However, it doesn't really work that great with these uh, this pack, but you can see that the, the heads have a few different skin tones. If you wanted to do this, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to have a few basic textures, which you can then tint in the material. But the, these textures aren't set up for that. But I'll, I'll, so I'll implement that and show you how we may be able to use that. So we're going to then need a second script. And this script is going to be um, the actual character customization. So this script is going to live on our uh, character game object, the actual thing that's running around in the world and is representing our player. In this video specifically, we're just going to be implementing a uh, randomize function. And this is just going to call into our scriptable object class and access these different pieces of data, pick a random one and assign it to our character. Obviously, if you want to take this further, you could uh, hook this up to a UI and that would allow players to manually scroll through the array and then choose exactly which items they want. That should be quite easy to set up if you have any experience with UI stuff. But if you want to see a follow up video from me uh, actually implementing this, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a follow up video. But as well as this randomized function, we're going to need um, references to the skinned mesh renderer for all of these. Um, so variables to reference following skinned meshes. So this is our mono behavior and this is our scriptable object. So before we jump into Unity and get coding, let me tell you a little bit more about Xtiles, which I'm using here. So Xtiles is a tool for visually organizing your ideas, projects, plans, and any useful information into one workspace. 
It combines the best practices from whiteboards and classic documents, and it has a great simplicity to it with a clean and intuitive visual interface. The best thing is you can start using Xtiles for free, or better yet, you can take 25% off a paid plan, which allows for you to put down unlimited blocks and also to upload files up to a 500 megabyte allowance. Thank you to Xtiles for supporting this video. Head down to the link in the description to learn more. Okay, so here I am in Unity. Um, the actual terrain behind me is a, another, I think it was a free asset I got or part of a pack. Uh, the terrain's not important. What's important is our little character here. So you see here we've got, um, I dragged in the basic female character from the modular RPG heroes. And you can see here that we've got an animator which is pointing to the character's uh, avatar which if we open up this avatar, so you can see that every single item here um, that we saw in this image here, they're all parented in one FBX file to this, this uh, the same skeleton here. And I can show you this a bit better over in Blender. So we've got our skeleton here and you can see on underneath this character, we've got all of these different um, items. So if I select all of them and hide them, you can see we've just got the skeleton left. Now, this skeleton isn't set up to pose properly within Blender, unfortunately. So we can't control it properly like you would be able to. Um, but you can see how this is working. So if I go to um, this cloth and I enable this cloth uh, outfit, you can see that this is overlapping this skeleton. If we deform the skeleton, and again, it's not going to move properly, but you can see that this is controlling that mesh underneath it. If I then um, swap out for the other cloth, and again, if I start controlling it, you can see now how this one skeleton is driving all of these individual um, meshes. So if you wanted to set this up yourself in Blender with your own characters, you've got your one armature, and then you just um, set that armature as the armature for each of the individual kind of modular pieces of clothing or the sort of like helmets, um, faces, etc. So these are all just individual pieces that are all parented to the one skeleton. And then as we move the skeleton around, that controls the different pieces of the mesh. So hopefully that made sense. So back over in Unity, you can see here that this character has every single item equipped and it looks a bit ridiculous, but the basic walk cycles, and so this character's uh, walking left, um, everything is animating to that skeleton. And we can just swap out the skinned mesh renderer. So if we've got our, uh, say the hair here, we're gonna be swapping out this for one of the other hairs. So we've got this hair now set up here. So like I said, what we're gonna need is um, two scripts. So we're gonna need a scriptable object script. So we'll create a new C sharp script and we'll call this um, asset SO. And let's make another script and we'll call this one um, customizer. And we'll open up this one in our IDE as well. So we've got our two scripts here. So this first one, is going to be our scriptable object. So up here, we can do a create asset menu. We'll do menu name, and we can say um, character assets. Uh, yeah, and we'll just leave it as that. And this is gonna derive from scriptable object. And this one, we're gonna leave as a mono behavior. So what this is going to contain is if we refer back to our um, X tiles board, so we need mesh arrays for all of these different items. So I'm just going to copy these over into our, and I'll just comment them out just so we know exactly what we need to make. So we can have a public mesh array and we'll call this one belt. And then we'll duplicate that and we'll have clothes, duplicate that, gloves, hair, shoes, uh, shoulder pads. And let's also put in a public color array for skin color. And we can get rid of this. So that's this scriptable object done. So let's just save that. I'm just going to jump back over to Unity and let that compile. And then we can create, and we've got our character assets, which is this new 
scriptable object that we've just made. And we'll call this um, all assets. So now you can see if we select this over here, we can choose from our different belts, clothes, gloves, hair, shoes, shoulder pads, and we've also got an array or skin color. So we'll fill those out in a second. I just want to go back over and start working on this customizer script. So instead of having a mesh array, what we need over here is um, a skinned mesh renderer reference. And we need it for all of this. So we could say belt, clothes, gloves, hair, shoes, shoulder pads. And then we also need a reference to this asset that we've just created. So we can make a public um, asset SO reference, and I'll just call this assets. And then I'm just going to make a public void randomize method. This doesn't need to take in anything, but what it does need to do is, is assign this mesh renderer based on a random element from our assets scriptable object. So we can say um, belt is equal to assets dot belts and then we can do random dot range between zero and belts dot and assets dot belts dot length and we actually have to do belt dot shared mesh sorry and then again just duplicate this for um cloves 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 and then we could do gloves 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 hair hair and hair shoes shoes and shoes and then let's also outside of our class i'm going to make a custom editor um script just so we can have a button in the inspector that will allow us to just click randomize so we'll do a custom editor pointing at our so custom editor and this is going to be custom editor type of customizer this is going to sit over a public class and we can just call this a customizer editor and this can derive from editor so the first thing we need to do is override our um on inspector gui and the first thing we want to do is draw the default inspector and then we want to say var customizer is equal um target but we want to cast that to the type of customizer and we can say if customizer is not equal to null then we can draw a button so we can say if gui layout dot button and we'll call this uh, just randomize then we're just going to call to our customizer and call the randomize function on it and really we don't even need this because we know it's not going to be null um based on the fact that this is only going to be showing up when we're actually looking at the customizer class so this will be fine okay so let's pop back over to unity and hook stuff up so we've got our object here I'm just going to add the customizer class to this. We can drag in our scriptable object, and then we've got um, our belt reference, our clothes reference. Um, oh, I've not made one for the face in this case. I probably should have done. Uh, we've got gloves, hair, shoe, and shoulder pads. And let's correct that. Let's uh, put one in for face. So I'm going to call this face. And we need to make a faces array. And I've also forgot to do shoulder pads. So shoulder pads, shoulder pads, and shoulder pads. So again, let's jump back over to Unity, let that compile, and drag in the face reference over here. So currently, if we randomize, nothing will happen. We'll get an error. And that's because we haven't actually put anything in our um, array. So got our faces so let's just add the different elements to this so if i i'm going to lock this inspector so we don't lose it and then i can go over into where these are stored so we've got um so i've got default character here and i'm going to look for belt so we've got belt one two three we've got belt one belt two belt three so we can drag them over into our belts array and i think it needs to be that these lighter colored ones. Uh, we've got faces. So let's go to um, face one, two, three, four, five. We drag our faces in. We've got our clothes. And you get the picture. I will just speed through this section. OK, so they're all assigned now. So we've got all of our different um, assets into the relevant arrays. And then if we go back over to our 
basic female character here, and then we can hit the randomize button. And you see this is now doing what we wanted. So it's swapping out parts um, based on that scriptable object. And now obviously you can see that we're mixing here some mage, like mage type armor with uh, wizard type robes. Again, that's another use for this scriptable object that we've made. So this is obviously all of the assets. If you had different like archetypes and you only wanted certain characters to be able to choose from a certain pool of clothes, you could right click create character assets and then we could do a, you know, wizard assets. And then if on a character customization screen, they choose that they want to play as the wizard class, then they would also you just then assign this as the wizard like asset list and then just choose all of the wizardy type stuff. But you can see how this is quite a powerful customizable um, sort of system. If you wanted to implement the um, skin color, which we're not doing here, um, this is in from my test uh, project. So all I'm doing there is I've uh, got a, obviously the skinned mesh renderer for the face. And I'm storing a reference to the face material in start. And then when we randomize the character, I'm just setting that material's um, color to whatever the random skin color might be from the array. So if I go up to this folder, you see I've got this range of skin colors. And we're just going to pick from a random um, color in this list. And then we're going to tint the shared material of the face. So the face has its own material, which has got this base map that's um, grayscale. And then we can obviously tint this color here to whatever we want, whatever's in that array. So you could have, you could give them the full spectrum and then allow them to be green and orky. Um, or obviously you could pick from the available list of colors. So on this character, if I hit randomize, you can see that it changes the skin color based on that array. Um, so yeah, to make that work, what you need is uh, the face, the texture of the face. It has to be sort of like a gray scaly kind of color, and then you'll be able to tint it. Um, and that kind of multiplies the color with the base value. And you can see we can get a range of different skin tones, different sort of item types. And if we hit play, I've got this to randomize on play and it's all animating quite nicely. So. There you have it. That's the kind of character customization system. Um, thanks again for Exiles for sponsoring this video. Do check them out. And again, if you can get 25% off a paid plan, and there's a link for that in the description below. I'll be popping these two scripts up onto Patreon. Obviously, they're quite simple scripts. Um, but if you do want to kind of get them, then feel free to do so over on patreon.com forward slash dampos. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. As always, I want to take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have John Smart and Trey Briggs. And you can see all of the amazing 4,000 XP tier members on screen now. Thank you everyone for your support.